of vitamins you would uh, advise to take a group of vitamin B. So is there any particular focus on B12 or B6 or B1 for people with uh, brain fog and onco problems as well? B12, uh, as far as I know, the group of B vitamins, as I've heard, is not very advisable to use. The vitamin B group it's, it's, it's a group, and it's very artificially collected group because when vitamins were dis, uh, just uh, discovered, uh, then uh, simply scientists, when they, they're trying to extract vitamins uh, from some natural sources, uh, they used a very crude uh, primitive form of chromatography, so they had the fractions of vitamin like in different uh, places within the test tube, right? So there was group A, it was like a first band, yes, and group B, second band. So it was not functional, it's just, you know, whatever vitamins are similar in their uh, properties as being uh, solvable in water, mm -hmm. those your B vitamins. So it's very diverse group. If you look at the group B, there are uh, important uh, molecules there, but they're very different. B1, good thing for brain, for sure. We are rarely deficient by B1 when we are eating normal diets, but when people are on special kinds of treatment, like for example, if you take alcoholics, uh, they take a lot of alcohol, and uh, some people do, and uh, even human metabolism could be changed in such a way, and that's really a scientific fact, uh, then people take uh, alcohol as a main food. So people who drink, they don't need to eat, really, it can go to that um, degree. Uh, and then this uh, food source, alcohol, is uh, very devoid of vitamins. And the very first thing which is getting completely depleted and lost in the body of the alcoholic is B1 vitamin, also known as thiamine. And uh, the acute uh, lack of T uh, B1 vitamin, thiamine in the brain called, uh, so called Korsakoff syndrome. Korsakoff syndrome is uh, delirium, alcoholium delirium. You know what I mean? When people think that, oi, there are things, remove them from me. Yes, this is uh, alcoholium delirium. Yeah, there is nothing on them, but they see things, they need to remove them. Yes, they're crawling. Yeah, those crawlers. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, acute uh, absence of vitamin B1 in the brain. But before people get to the point when, you know, there are crawlers, there are other points. And one of them is brain fog. But mm -hmm. alcoholics expect brain fog. They are not uh, staved off by brain fog because they, they want brain fog from alcohol, so it's, it's normal for them. But people who do not drink this much, when they see brain fog, they attribute it not to alcohol because there were no alcohol there, but to some other state. So it might indeed be B1 deficiency, and you can take B1 separately. B1 vitamin is group B vitamin, but it has nothing to do with oncology or anything else. It's, it's, it's really helping brain, so take it, no problem. Okay, vitamin B2, also good. Uh, it's riboflavin, you can take it, it's actually uh, part of many preparations uh, which are used anti-stroke. So B2, not a problem as well. B3, niacin, it's mostly for uh, the lipid formula improvement. So sometimes in some protocols you can say, oh, you take up to three grams or, you know, six grams of niacin per day in order to make your lipid formula good. We, talking about it separately sometime, but uh, niacin, yes, you need it, but 100 milligrams will be enough for you, yes, so don't go for those uh, high-level protocols, because uh, the first thing which you will get is very severe flush reactions, so you would be feeling uh, hotness in your face, uh, like uh, buzzing uh, brain, buzzing body, don't go there, 100 milligrams is enough, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, before is actually detrowned vitamin. It used to be vitamin, and then it was found that body actually can do choline, which is vitamin B4, and that's why there are gaps in the B numbers. Yes, so mm -hmm. vitamin one, two, three, and then six, because vitamin B5, uh, yeah, it's actually good vitamin. It is still vitamin, but you don't need it for post-COVID, 
and uh, vitamin B4 was detrown. B4 is a real good thing because yes, indeed, scientists uh, they like to fight other scientists and say no you are not that great as you wish to be in the beginning of 20th century there was a battle of scientists about who discovered what vitamins it really was like a jousting uh, the scientific field uh, and uh, every scientist who worked in the field they wanted to discover new vitamin and other scientists ganged up against the scientists and say no your vitamin does not fulfill criteria for being a vitamin so you wouldn't get your Nobel Prize. And what's happened with choline, vitamin B4, is that first scientists discovered and say that's a vitamin, you really cannot live without it. And then other scientists, they say, eh, you need picking. And they found some natural way in our body how choline could be synthesized. And that's why choline is not really fulfilling the criteria for vitamin. Problem is that our body can do that little and also, even if it's making this as a byproduct, it's producing certain toxin. So you don't want to make choline in your body. You want to bring choline from outside. It's much healthier. Where we can find choline, like uh, eggs, for example, egg yolks. That would be your choline, yeah? Best source of choline. No, and of course, you can take it as supplement. And choline is very important compound for neurotransmission. So it will be healing your brain too. So I would say uh, vitamin uh, B1, vitamin B2 for, for sure, vitamin B3, no more than 100 milligram, and uh, then you take B4 ad libitum. Eat your egg bacon, not a problem at post-COVID, yes? And if uh, physicians would tell you that, okay, your lipid formula now is so bad that you have to limit uh, fat in your diet, uh, say okay, so a physician would not be disturbed or offended, then, then go home and continue with your egg bacon. Yeah? Uh, you know, there is English breakfast and continental breakfast. By all means, English breakfast is healthier because continental breakfast is just loading on the carbs. It's better to load on the fats in the morning than load on the carbs, for sure. So go ahead. So we already covered B1, B2, B3, B4. Now, B5 is biotin. It kind of didn't make sense uh, in COVID unless if you have problems with like your hair, nails, some people do have problems like this. Usually they come on some natural deficiency uh, background when you have gene, which is not really making biotin into its final form. And then you can only overcome this by overloading with biotin. Or uh, if you have some autoimmune reaction against the roots of your If no problem with hair, B5 not important. Mm -hmm. If you have problem with hair, like hair falling out, yeah, then add B5 just to close this gap. Now B6. B6 is very important vitamin and it is a neuroprotective vitamin, but it's a very high amount that's becoming neurodemogen. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say after COVID, you can use uh, B6. So you you can use B6 as well, add it to regimen. It's not a big deal. And uh, it's uh, certainly a possibility that you have a deficiency. It's better if you measure its level before you start supplementing. But I would say in the condition of COVID, okay, B6, mm -hmm. good. Now what we have, just two leftovers. It's B9 and B12. B9 vitamin, even if it is uh, sounding like B9, yes, something which is anti-tumor. No, it's actually not. B9. So two major problems here are B12 and B9. In mm -hmm. case of B9, unfortunately, because it's directly feeding into the cell cycle, if you have any kind of uh, hidden tumors in your body, then high consumption of B9 will help them to wake up uh, and then proliferate. And you don't want this. So I would say people who are young, it's very good to have enough of the B9 vitamin because when you are young and adequate and benign, it is working against tumor genesis. So it is helping you not to develop small tumors, which then become dormant and then they become woken up. In, if you are before 40, having enough supply of benign vitamin is real good for you. Now, when you are after, say, 55, you need to really have... Uh, your colonoscopy is a guidance. If you never had colonoscopy, maybe just in case you don't want to 
stimulate yourself with benign vitamin. If you had colonoscopy, then depending on the results of your colonoscopy, if there were polyps growing, even not malignant polyps, just, you know, regular polyp growth, and your doctor told you that, okay, I snipped 10 polyps away. Yes, 10 polyps, it's not small amount. So that means that you will be certainly growing more in the future. And benign vitamin directly helps uh, the polypogenesis and uh, tumor genesis in the colon. So I would say don't do that in such case. In case of B12 vitamin, it's uh, also very nuanced because if you're vegetarian, you are certainly deficient in B12 vitamin and you need supplementation. And after COVID, you will be even more deficient and you certainly need supplementation with B12. But uh, if you are normally eating person, then uh, actually the levels of B12 vitamin may be indicators of something growing in your colon as well. Because uh, colonic tumors uh, tend to learn how to make their own B12 vitamin and they create large amount of B12 vitamin in the blood. I would say before taking B12, if you are vegetarian, that's okay, do take it. If you are non-vegetarian, better if you just measure B12 in your blood and depending on the level, if the levels are dropping, then you supplement. Especially when levels are higher than normal, that's a no-no. You don't add more B12 to your routine in such case. So here, see, I gave you entire spectrum of B, mm -hmm. but you really need to choose whatever is in front of the group rather what is at the end of the group. And mm -hmm. again, B, even as a group, don't work well. You need to take them separately, mm -hmm. especially colon. Colon, just take separately with your egg yolks. And the rest of it you can take uh, as uh, separate medications. I should say, yeah, they are more efficient when they uh, are injection form. But maybe you wouldn't be able to reach to get uh, injection form. The oral form also good, just working not that fast. But injection form working faster.